The world is changing. Climate change is increasingly posing one of the biggest long-term threats to human survival. Our food supplies are dwindling and cannot keep up with the ever-growing human population. In order to survive, we need to adjust to our environment and fight the scourge that is famine, especially here in Kenya. According to the statistics released by UNICEF, the food and nutrition crisis in Kenya has affected close to 8 million people. That is almost 20% of the Kenyan population. The report by the UN cites climate-related issues as a major contributing factor to the food crisis in the country. Close to 370,000 children are malnourished due to lack of access to healthy food. You will find that there are seeds that are indigenous. Many people don't know them or don't use them, but they have very good nutrition value that if they were embraced, they would help people to get the nutrients that they would require so that we don't have cases of malnutrition either in children or pregnant women or even in any of the populations. One of the biggest challenges facing the Kenyan farmer today is access to seeds. Distorted power positions in the seed market have backed farmers into a corner. Many multinationals have introduced intellectual property rights over most indigenous seeds in Kenya restricting farmers from implementing innovative ideas on seeds. Farmers are forced to use these seeds provided by multinationals that do not adjust to the ever-changing climate in the region. Seed is the beginning of a food system and there is no way we could have a seed, we could have food security or nutritional security without having uh, seed security and if communities have to access seeds for them to access food so and uh, you know seed uh, is the most important input in farming and given our society in Kenya I mean Kenya in general uh, more than 60 percent of uh, population depend on agriculture and uh, Without seeds, you cannot do agriculture. You could ignore any other agricultural input, but you cannot have food security. You cannot have agricultural economy without seeds. Due to lack of access, farmers were forced to wait for long periods of time to get the supply of seeds they needed for planting. Not just any seeds, but local seeds that can adjust to the climate. Seed Savers Network was founded to tackle such issues. The aim of the organization is not only to provide access to seeds, but to sensitize farmers on the significance of conserving indigenous and non-GMO seeds that will adapt to a certain environment. Hey, ni Musuri. Sababu mimi hinunua gita nini bego. Saida mimi nataka kupanda na naenda kwa store. Na chukua bego. Mufoi kunyesa, mina yeda kwa stoko, kwa chukua begu yagu gaya, kwa chamba. Nga panda, sasa yagu ikamea mbele ya ya watu wala wanaenda tau. Eh, hey, sasa ni musuri kuweka kwa, kwa stoko. Tangu nilipo wacha kununua mbegu sa ile ya kisasa, nika ingia mbegu ya, ya kiasili, ya samani, na imenisaidia kwa sababu siangaiki mbegu. Na pia, inanisaidia kwa sababu na hifadhi mbegu sangu inakaa mwaka huyo mwingine ikifika ninatoa tu kwa store ikiwa karibu Seed Savers Network in partnership with Hevos East Africa has implemented a program under the umbrella of the open source seed system This system encourages breeders not to patent their seeds but to declare them open source or free to all This way Farmers have access to these seeds and can plant them in time. Juu kuweka hii begu zako wakati mfua itanyesha hakuna anza aende kwa duka kenda kwa duka unakuta hakuna kibegu lakini kwa store unachukua begu zako unaenda kufanya nyi kupanda. Hakuna na time ya kuwest that you umekosa begu. Hii begu ni mzuri kwa sababu inasaidia kuhifadhi ama kutengeneza mazingira kwa sababu hii haitaji mambo ya madawa to spray 
tu atuweki zile mambolea ya kununua na kupika madawa ambayo inaleta madhara na pia inakuwa na haina madhara kama vile magonjwa ambayo hii mbegu ya kisasa baada ya kupiga madawa hizo chemicals na affect watu lakini hii haina ukienda kupanda tu kitoka ni ready Seed Savers Network started this program to ensure that farmers have access to these particular indigenous seeds that will survive in any given environment. Some of these indigenous crops that are being utilized under this program include a variety of local vegetables and grains. Maintaining a healthy lifestyle requires one to consume natural grains and vegetables that are easy to grow here. Some of the indigenous foods, for example, uh, vegetables, green vegetables, they, are, they have very high content of iron. And so when someone does not consume them, they are likely to lack iron. And as we know, lack of iron is likely to lead to anemia. So when you find such a situation in young children or even in school-going children, those that have um, iron deficiency, they would most likely not concentrate in school. They are not able to be optimal in terms of even their studies. So it would be beneficial to have um, a population that has high iron levels. Even amongst pregnant women, we have to continue supplementing them with, with iron um, uh, because if they are not supplemented and they are not taking these indigenous foods or seeds that have the high iron content, it means they would have issues of low birth weight children, would have issues of women um, having miscarriages and other issues that would arise. Basically, we are saying that if you eat foods that are indigenous and they are high in nutrients, specific nutrients, then you are preventing a problem that you would not need to cure in the future. Kikura jahe ukure yige zigo, ukure ingine ya yero, kwanza ya yero di natumio sahi ni watu wa wajo wa shukari. Na tena pressure ina reduce. Kwa hivyo hii mchakura yetu ya samani turudie. By encouraging the use of the open source seeds program, over 50,000 farmers now have access to seeds that do not require chemicals to thrive in their respective environments. The seed bank system was introduced to the local farmers through the Seed Savers Network and Hevos Education Forums. Here farmers were taught how to preserve the seeds from previous harvests and how to store them properly in seed banks. This ensures that the farmers have a backup of seeds to use during the plantation season. Kabla ya seed savers kunipata nilikuwa naendelea kupanda. Lakini changamoto ile ilikuwa ni nani teknolojia ambayo sikuwa najua namna ya kuweka vizuri lakini seed savers walipoingia wakanisaidia kuanzisha mambo ya seed bank. Namna ya kuhifadhi, namna ya kupanda na pia wakatupeleka mambo ya field day mambo ya trainings alafu ya kuhusu mambo ya mbegu namna ya kupanda mbegu ya ya kiasili ambaye tunaweza kuhifadhi mbegu na imenisaidia kwa sababu nikifika na wauzisha majirani na wauzisha familia na wale walio karibu kuwaita wakati ninapanda kuwaita wakati nimetoka training ili kuja kuwafundisha pia kuwapa ile information kuhusu mambo ya mbegu Asisi si kujua ati inasaguo. Sasa hawa wakuja wakafudiza sisi tusagwe. Usagua. Mbegu kado, hii kado, hii mwetamani ya kado, hii mbegu fulani hivi. Sasa tukajua hivyo ni mzuri. In terms of ensuring seed access and uh, preservation, we have come up with a model where we have uh, a group of farmers coming together to save seeds together and to have a seed bank in that particular village. And every, every uh, planting season, we, we do a seed fair. And farmers around that seed bank are able to display their seeds and show their seeds to the whole village so that the, the other villagers who are not members of the seed bank can buy seeds 
and the farmers who are also members of the seed bank and other farmers who are not can exchange seeds with other farmers who are growing food. So we, we are promoting the model where every village we have a seed bank and uh, the seed bank become the source of the seed. And uh, the reason for having a seed bank is because when farmers keep seeds in their own homestead, they, and then we have a, a period of where food is, is, uh, is becomes scarce, they, they tend to consume the seeds. And when they consume the seed, come the planting season, uh, and the rains have come, they have no seeds, they have to wait for someone else to send them money to buy seeds, or they have to go and give labor, do some menu work so that they can get seeds. And they delay for two weeks, and every delay, you, you get for, a, for, for, for before you plant, there is a, a lot of loss in yield. By the time you lose three, four weeks, you have lost uh, more than 50% of the yields. By building this network, Seed Savers Network founder Daniel Wanjama believes the war on drought and food shortage will be won. He believes that with the right access to seeds and practicing good farming methods, our country will ensure a constant supply of good natural foods that will foster better health for the population. We want to have uh, this information together with information on um, the value of our local varieties spread far and wide so that uh, we can also find whether it is possible to work with breeders who can register uh, local varieties and uh, declare them open source so that they can be part of the common, uh, commonly accessible varieties but they are also protected from privatization and we are also looking at possibilities of also working with uh, uh, people at the regulatory authority so that they can also see whether they could relax the way the seeds are registered so that uh, farmers varieties don't have to go through the system that they use for commercial varieties for registration so that it becomes easier and accessible service. And uh, we, we are also looking at possibilities of uh, working with county government so that they can be able to set up seed banks and support farmers seed network so that they are able to preserve indigenous varieties and uh, keep them for the coming generations and improve nutrition through having these uh, local varieties accessible and used by the people who need them. <music>